This is Dr. Anna Maria Mihaicha. This lecture is about environmental health, the effects of heavy metal burden, part one, exposure and effects. Heavy metals that negatively impact health uh, are many. There is aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, cobalt that we're seeing more now uh, in terms of heavy metal burden in artificial hips and joint replacement. Copper is an essential heavy metal that is utilized in the body. However, in excess, it can cause problems. Uh, lead, mercury, no amount of those heavy metals is really safe. Nickel, tin, vanadium. We also have gadolinium which is utilized at contrast material for radiologic procedures. Heavy metals occur in different mediums. Lead is in the air. Um, before 1979, uh, gasoline contained a lot of lead, uh, and so millions of tons of lead were distributed uh, into our air and inhaled uh, by people. Uh, and lead is in bone broth, in collagen, in paints, in lead contaminated food, as well as drinking water. And we'll talk more about sources. Uh, mercury is in fish, especially tuna, sea bass, halibut, and marlin, in food contaminations, in dental care like amalgams, in preventative medical practices like thimerosal and vaccines, as well as in industrial and occupational operations. Arsenic uh, occurs in rice, in insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, ceramic shellfish. In fact, uh, the pesticides uh, that were utilized with high arsenic content is what made our soils so filled with arsenic. Cadmium is in cigarettes, trace amounts in leafy vegetables, in potatoes, in crustaceans, and drinking water. And aluminum is in pharmaceutical and personal care products, your deodorants, your drinking water, your cooking ware. You might have seen this article recently in the news that high levels of arsenic have been found in baby cereal made with rice, and it could cause a drop in children's IQ. Uh, over 170 baby foods were tested uh, by a nonprofit group, and they found that 95% of these samples contained heavy metals like lead, arsenic, cadmium, or mercury. The rice-based cereal was identified as the top source of arsenic in the infant's diets. And the projection is that in newborns and children up to two years old, um, we lose more than 11 million IQ points from the exposure to arsenic and lead in food. This is from the FDA website. Lead is in food, foodwares, and dietary supplements, and that is well known. The lead occurs in food because of the presence in the environment. Uh, it can enter the food supply because lead can settle in the soil and then can be absorbed by plants. And these um, plants, for example, fruits or vegetables that are used, if they're utilized in dietary supplements, we can also get heavy metal exposures through that. Uh, there have been high amounts of heavy metal contamination found in Ayurvedic supplements. Lead that gets on the plants cannot be completely removed through the washing process. And the leads in plants or water uh, may be absorbed by the animals that we eat, and that's then passed on to us. In manufacturing processes, in plumbing, in pottery, particularly certain ceramics that have lead paint. 
Lead poisoning is a major threat in America's shooting ranges. There was a big article in the Seattle Times uh, discussing the high risk of the exposure of lead um, through the vapors that are released when firing the firearms. And there have been studies conducted through LNI that looked at thousands of blood test results for lead through the Washington State Adult Blood Lead Epidemiology and Surveillance Program. There were 59 employees at nine gun ranges who had lead levels of 25 micrograms or higher in the blood. Uh, and it is thought that that is an underestimation. Uh, the lead was creating symptoms of nausea, fatigue, to organ damage, to mental impairment, um, to low testosterone levels, erectile dysfunction, many other things. This is the process in which the lead vapors are released. Uh, the bullet has a lead core and the shooter is inhaling that vapor. Toxic jewelry is a major problem. Cadmium has been found in many different products. This study is from Canada. Uh, they've tested jewelry for children and found that the levels of cadmium were between 15 and 7,000 times higher than the threshold for cadmium uh, given by the Canadian Health Agency. Let us in lipstick. Millions of women use this. Uh, there was research by the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics and the FDA. 61% of lipsticks contain lead with levels ranging up to 0.65 parts per million. Remember, no amount of lead is safe. Uh, these lead contaminated brands include L'Oreal, CoverGirl, uh, Dior. The FDA found that the highest lead levels were made by three manufacturers, Procter & Gamble, L'Oreal, Maybell, and Revlon. The FDA did another study in 2010 and found lead in 400 lipsticks at levels up to 7.19 parts per million. Five of the 10 most lead contaminated brands in the FDA studies are made by L'Oreal USA. So remember, lead is not safe in any amount. It can be toxic neurologically in small doses. It has been linked to learning language behavioral problems, reduces fertility in men and women, it creates hormonal changes, menstrual irregularities, uh, delayed onset of puberty in girls, and development of testes in boys. The concentrations uh, in these lip products was evaluated. One particular California woman um, had 32 different lip products, and uh, it wasn't just lead that was in those, but aluminum, chromium, manganese, as well as the lead, um, in addition to cadmium. And yes, there is arsenic in your rice. Um, this was an article in the Huffington Post 2017. Uh, arsenic is toxic. It's been associated with lung, skin, and bladder cancer, uh, but you can still eat rice. There are many different uh, forms of arsenic. Uh, the inorganic arsenic is the most toxic and the most dangerous. And yes, that is present in rice, which is why you might want to moderate your rice intake, is what the authors write. Letters in purses, belts, and shoes can be absorbed through the skin. In 2009, um, there was legal action against major retailers for selling purses and other accessories with high levels of lead. 
16 out of 21 stores visited had high lead contents in purses. Lead is in drinking water. The acidic chemicals added to the water magnify the uptake of lead into the body. And 98% of homes have lead in their plumbing from lead and copper pipes connected by lead solder. So chrome-plated faucets are made of brass that contain up to 8% of lead. This is another way that we can get exposed. This was the fire of the Notre Dame Cathedral during which uh, 400 tons of lead tile burned. Um, what occurred is that in the surrounding Paris area, the levels of lead were uh, up to 1,300 times higher than the French safety guidelines. Uh, the lead spread across central Paris, settling in school, parks, and other public places. And more than 6,000 children younger than age 6 live within half a mile of these locations. This is a map done by Reuters. Uh, it has been found that thousands of U.S. towns uh, have lead poisoning worse than Flint, Michigan. So you can see uh, this map, the darker the areas, the higher the lead concentration in the soil and the higher the contamination. As you can see, the Seattle area in Washington state also has relatively high levels. The problem is that the half-life of lead is extremely long. So lead, once it's ingested or inhaled, is in the bloodstream for about 28 days. Then it gets absorbed into the bones, and its half-life in the bones is 30 years. So what that means is that it would take 30 years to eliminate half of the lead content. This is why people who have been born before 1979 uh, should be evaluated because, for example, during that time, the lead was in our gasoline and we were inhaling it. So this absorption is cumulative. Cadmium is stored in the kidneys, liver, and lung can be toxic there. Um, the half-life is also 30 years in these organ systems. Mercury is stored in the kidneys and the brain. The half-life is months, but it's also a very toxic metal. The problem is that multiple agencies admit these things. The bioaccumulation of heavy metals uh, and the synergistic effect is really greater than what is known to date. The National Institute for Environmental Health Services made the statement that low levels exposures are associated with long-term effects not previously recognized. The CDC uh, made this statement, knowledge of adverse effects are based primarily on independent studies of a single toxicant. So we don't have good studies in which multiple toxic heavy metals are in the biological system. Metals can elicit independent additive or synergistic toxic effect. The levels for exposures have not considered that humans bioaccumulate metals. So there are certain reference ranges that are given in labs, for example, uh, for what is normal. But it's clearly known that, for example, for lead uh, or mercury, no level is safe. The date, latest data shows that for children, the blood lead levels are increasing. And uh, this was a study of this year. Uh, the CDC released a report that showed that the average child blood, blood lead levels was going down from 2007, 2008 to 2013, but then has been increasing in different percentiles 
in 2015 to 2016. The adverse health effects through lead and the mechanisms of disease progressions are mediated through this oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is one of the ways in which we're aging. So reactive oxygen species that are produced uh, through the effects of lead uh, are causing DNA damage and cellular damage. It's been shown that lead reduces the production of nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is absolutely imperative for vascular health. Lead increases inflammation. It adversely affects the endothelial cell function, that is the lining of the blood vessels in the arteries. Uh, it interferes with calcium signaling. Calcium signaling is an important mechanism of how cells are functioning. It leads to hormonal dysregulation. Many heavy metals are xenohormones, meaning they pretend to act like hormones, but there are not hormones, obviously. And they cause problems um, with dysregulation, abnormal function. It the lead causes kidney dysfunction, and lead causes epigenetic changes. And a little later, I'll discuss what that means, um, the toxic effects of heavy metals on our genome. The symptoms of lead in the body burden are fatigue, irritability, hearing loss, reduced IQ, particularly in children, infertility, high blood pressure, heart disease, changes in the electrical system in the heart leading to EKG changes, chronic kidney disease, peripheral neuropathy are the nerves uh, in the uh, feet and hands, arthralgia means joint pain, myalgia means muscle pain and gout, nausea and constipation. Antisocial and criminal behavior goes up substantially. There have been studies that have looked at uh, blood lead levels uh, who, and hostile and aggressive and uh, increase in criminality in certain areas. Uh, lead causes seizures, coma, death at high levels. Cataracts, emotional instability and cognitive decline. Mercury is also very important. The International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology has excellent information um, regarding the dental amalgam fillings. The mercury poisoning symptoms can occur as a result of the human exposure to this toxic element um, that can cause harm to the human body at very low doses. So these um, Mercury amalgam fillings have elemental or metallic mercury in them. And there are different forms of mercury. For example, in uh, fish, it's methyl mercury. In vaccines, it's uh, ethyl mercury. They're metabolized differently. In the other fillings, like the silver fillings, there's still about 50% mercury in them. And the problem is that this mercury vapor is off-gassing continuously, intoxicating the person who has these amalgams. Uh, that has been clearly shown. The mercury is then absorbed, retained in the body. It is a neurotoxin, meaning it causes brain damage. Uh, the Vapor production is increased through chewing, teeth grinding, and the consumption of hot liquids. The accumulation of mercury causes symptoms like these, for example, emotional instability, loss of appetite, weakness, skin changes, loss of appetite, cardiovascular problems, cognitive and neurological impairments, memory loss, decrease in mental function, delusions, delirium, hallucinations, dermatologic skin condition, endocrine disruption, the enlargement of the thyroid, irritability, abnormal responses to stimulation, emotional instability, fatigue, 
headaches, hearing loss, immune system impairments, lack of sleep, nerve response changes, decreased coordination, weakness, muscle atrophy, that's the shrinking of muscle volume and twitching. The manifestations in the mouth can um, have gingivitis, metallic taste, lichenoid, which can develop into cancerous lesions, salivation problem. There are psychological issues, mood swings, anger, depression, irritability, and nervousness, kidney problem, respiratory problems, excessive shyness and social withdrawal, tremors, um, and weight loss. The uh, treatment of these mercury toxicity as well as all other heavy metal toxicity is first the removal from the toxic source in this case the removal of the amalgams the process of removal needs to be done very very specific otherwise more toxicity to the body can occur and it needs to be done by professional uh, individuals who are well trained in the safe removal of these amalgams. Tobacco um, has heavy metals in them, so that is affecting the smokers. Uh, the other thing that's going on with the tobacco smoke is that they also have radioactive nucleotide uh, in them, for example. This study uh, from Greece showed that, that radium, polonium, and other radioactive isotopes were found in the leaves of tobacco and were a thousand times higher than in the leaves of Chernobyl around the nuclear accident. Uh, so in people who smoke about 30 cigarettes a day, um, their natural radionucleotides at about 251 microsieverts a year, whereas 0 0.199 from Chernobyl fallout in the leaves. And scientists are warning that the cancer deaths among the smokers are due to the radioactive content of tobacco leaves and not the nicotine and tar. Here is a toxic metal profile of a long-term smoker. In my office you see the highest level of cesium is excreted, then lead and cadmium, uh, and then there's other heavy metals. So how are toxic metals affecting our epigenetics? Um, epigenetics is the inheritable changes in gene expression that occur, but it's not about changing the DNA sequence. So there's DNA methylation, there's histone, which is a protein modification that affects the folding of DNA, and then microRNA expression. MicroRNA is what governs about 60% of the human genome. So through these methods, the genetic function can be changed, and that's called epigenetics. It's been shown that um, organic toxins, as well as metals like cadmium, arsenic, nickel, chromium, methyl mercury, um, there's lead as well, actually work by changing epigenetics on DNA methylation, uh, changes in microRNA. So these chemicals are altering how our genetic material is read. And through these epigenetic changes, disease is created. The issue is that, and the big question is, is these epigenetic change inherited then transgenerational? So this is how it works. The exposure to the heavy metals leads to oxidative stress. Methyl groups need to be available to, uh, for multiple processes in uh, the, this genome. 
DNA methylation, histone coda, and microRNA are affected. The other aspects that we have discussed is that heavy metals increase inflammation. There's endocrine, meaning hormonal disruption, and then that changes gene expression and it increases the disease risk. So it's been shown that this DNA methylation, the change in the histone code, and the microRNA expression are leading to many different diseases. Uh, we are talking about cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, arteriosclerosis, ataxia is a gait imbalance, immune deficiencies, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and systemic lupus, which is an autoimmune disease. So the uh, toxicologic effects of heavy metals <clears throat> are relevant for this epigenetic regulation. This um, shows how the different heavy metals, like arsenic, cadmium, chromium, copper, lead, mercury, and nickel, how many histones are being affected, as well as how much of the microRNA expression is changed. And then you see on the other table that either there is transcription, gene transcription that is silenced, or it is activated, and depending on which, you can develop different disease states. This is the end of part one of this uh, lecture. Uh, please check out part two of the environmental uh, health um, information. I am an ACAM, American College for the Advancement of Medicine, Certified Chelation Practitioner. I treat environmental health problems. Um, and you can check us out at ammedicalmd.com. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And I hope you enjoyed this education. Thanks for listening. <laughs>